On the build show today, we're talking metal roofing. We're at my house under construction and I've got a really cool black roof about to go on my house. We're gonna talk through the entire process, guys, start to finish. We're gonna go from roof deck to final install. We're gonna talk about the machine that makes it, the metal. We're gonna jump into the costs and I'm gonna give you a few of the nerdy details to really get a bomber install. Today's video is sponsored by Sheffield Metals. Let's get going. All right guys, so metal roofing, it all starts right here at this machine. Now this could happen back at the shop, but we like to actually run the panels on the site. This is a new tech machine, and what's happening is that metal coil, that's actually a Sheffield Metals coil that already is painted with the Keller, is making this profile right here. You can see this is what the panel looks like when it comes out. And this is gonna get clipped down to the deck the other panel is going to go on top, and then you're going to see later that this is going to get mechanically seamed in what they call a double lock profile by a robot. Now, what I'm doing is I'm making a, this will be a 24 gauge roof, and this metal that comes out, the roofer's already taken measurements at the roof, so when these panels come out, the machine's actually cutting them to the panel length, and then we're going to stock them in the driveway. Now let's actually go up on the roof and let's start at the roof deck and I'm gonna to talk to you about the process before the roofer arrived. Okay, so let's talk about a couple critical details before the roof panels themselves get laid. First off, you gotta think about underlayment. Now you can use a lot of different underlayments uh, underneath the metal roof, but one of my personal favorites is the Sharkskin Ultra SA. This is a very thick synthetic material that's a full peel and stick, a full ice and water shield. We like that for durability reasons. Uh, you know, I'm in Texas, so I'm not super worried about ice damming, but it does happen. Uh, but if you're in the north, you definitely want to think about ice damming. You definitely want to peel and stick at least the first three or four feet uh, at your eaves, and you also want that up your valleys for extra protection underneath your metal roof. Now, I've gone the extra step and done that everywhere in my house. I want that extra bomber uh, underlayment. If I got a leak back here at the head wall that comes in, I want to make sure that it's going to run down harmlessly. The other benefit of a full peel and stick is that I have just less fasteners in this roof. Now we will have some fasteners later, but if I can reduce the amount of fasteners overall, that's a good thing. This underlayment in particular is nice because it's got a really thick adhesive, uh, an acrylic adhesive, plus the membrane itself is pretty thick. So it's gonna do a pretty good job of kind of self gasketing around those penetrations later. Next, let's talk airflow underneath the roof. So before we put our drip edge down, which is that very first piece of metal that they're gonna bend, one detail that I really like, this isn't a necessity, but I think it's really best practice, is the thing about getting some airflow underneath your metal roof. Here's the drip edge right here, which is really the first piece the roofer is gonna put down, and he's gonna bend this out of the same metal as the roof. And this drip edge, what it's doing is when the roof comes down, it's gonna allow that water to drip out and come ahead of my fascia, which is right here. And then if you attach a gutter, which I highly recommend gutters, it's gonna allow that, that water dripping down to pop into the gutter and not run down your fascia. Now on this drip edge, see how it's kind of off my fascia? That's because I've put this strip on right here. This is by Coravent, and this is a corrugated plastic kind of cardboard material. It's about half inch or so thick, and if you look at it, you can actually see daylight through there. What's happening is this gets put onto the fascia first, and then the roofer is putting this drip edge on. Now the reason being is I wanna space my roof off the deck by just a little bit so I can get some airflow, some drainage, and some drying underneath that metal. There's a bunch of different options. On my low pitch roofs, right here I'm just a 312, it's a nice gentle pitch. Uh, I'm, I'm gonna use one of these two options. This is by Keen and this is called their ViperVent CDR. This is, um, I think, 0 0.30, so it's about uh, a third of an inch thick. It's a 3D mesh material that won't compress underneath the metal, so that if any condensation happens underneath the metal, if we were to have a leak that happened around a flashing, there's a gap, there's an air gap underneath that metal so that we can get drainage and we can get airflow in there to dry it all out. This is a best practice. Another option would be Sharkskin's dimple mat. Now this is gonna be a little bit uh, more rigid than this other one. It's definitely not gonna compress. That's another good option. But on my high pitch portion of my roof right behind me here, I've got an 812 pitch. And with that 812 pitch, 
those choices can be a little sketchy to walk on without a bunch of tow boards. So I opted for a method that I've used a bunch, which is a one by four on a diagonal. On this roof up here, I've done the one by four on a 45 degree angle. That's a great detail because now I've got a really easily walkable surface. I'm not as worried about tow boards. As long as you're tied off, it's a fairly easy roof to walk on for the guys during that roofing process. But it's also giving me extra elevation. Those one by fours are three quarters of an inch thick. So I've got a really good drainage and drying space. I also have lots of uh, meat to screw into, right? I don't have to worry about screw length because those standard screws uh, from the metal roof are gonna screw right in there when I get there. And I have one last product that I'd recommend if you're in the South, and that's a radiant barrier. Now the guys at Sharkskin make this material. It's a flexible kind of aluminum feeling material. And you gotta be careful about placement though. You need the silver reflective side facing towards the air gap. So you actually see on this roof here where I had my one by fours and where I'm doing this drainage mat, I put the silver side down. The silver, the aluminum, whatever that product is that's really highly reflective needs to face the air gap. And then when the sun's radiant rays hit that, because of that air gap, it's gonna reject that heat and we're gonna make my house much, much cooler. That's a best practice absolutely for the South. You may not need that if you're in a Northern climate. Okay, now let's talk about the roof itself and the process of installing these panels. So we saw the new tech machine making these panels and here's the two samples uh, that Ryan ran for me out of the machine. And you can see that roll former is making two different profiles. On this profile, we've got kind of a candy cane shape here. And then on this one, we've got an L top. What's happening is the roofers are gonna put this panel down and they're gonna put a clip over here that's gonna get screwed to the deck. Now that screw spacing might vary a little bit. If you're in a high wind zone, if your building codes require you to have a wind rated roof, you're gonna be really cautious about that screw, um, the type of screw, how many uh, screws per feet you're gonna put in, all that sort of thing. And then the next panel when it goes on is gonna come over top of that. See how that works? It's kind of cool. And then eventually you're gonna crimp that. Now there's a couple different ways to crimp. I'll get that in, into that in a second. But let's talk about that panel when it goes down. You're gonna notice when the panel goes down, it's got a tongue that's a little bit long and they're gonna fold that tongue in with a hand crimper. And then there's also a little bit of a, uh, a tab on both sides that's gonna get folded in. And the guys are gonna use a hand crimper on the bottom and a hand crimper here. Now everything has good drainage. We've got everything uh, running positively with gravity. So in this project, they're using a mechanical seamer. It's basically a robot that will do this crimping, but you could of course hand crimp that as well. And then you'll notice the ridge cap is not on yet on this roof. Eventually we'll have a ridge cap that will go on there. And that ridge cap is also gonna be vented. We want a little bit of airflow right here at this fascia and a little a bit of airflow at that ridge cap. All right guys, that's basically the process. Let's go downstairs and I've got the Sheffield metal guys here. I wanna talk about the type of metal we're using, how it's finished, what to expect on the paint finish, all those kinds of things. I'll see you downstairs. All right guys, special treat for you. I've got Adam Mazzella. Adam is actually the owner of Sheffield Metals. Adam, thanks for coming out to yeah, the job Yeah, appreciate site, you man. having us today. Always love having a family owned company because I feel like uh, you guys are gonna make better decisions than some of the corporate giants. But Adam, I wanted to have you out as an expert to talk to these guys about what's the difference between metals, gauge thickness, finishes. Will this roof need to be repainted some of the someday? Can you answer some of those questions for Absolutely. us? Absolutely. First, thanks for having us again. Um, just jumping into it, you know, we like to think that you're kind of going with the, the Cadillac of the system. Yeah. So we look at metal roofing as good, better, and best. You know, we we really like all metal roofing. Um, you know, but when you look at it, you've got 26, 29 gauge thicknesses that are usually a little bit thinner. Okay, define that real quick. What's the thicker gauge okay. between those two? So the thickest gauge out of those three, 24 gauge is going to be the thickest. It's kind of counterintuitive. Stepping down a little bit thinner is 26 gauge, and okay. then stepping down even further is that 29 gauge mix that Got you it. see. Got it, so the lower number is thicker. That's right. Yeah, so the lower number is thicker, and you know, you see predominantly in standing seam roof applications, you're gonna see 24 gauge. You might see some 26 gauge. If you're really going bulletproof traditionally on like a, a higher end commercial type application schools, you might even see 22 gauge. Ooh, that's thick. Yeah, That'd so be you hard really to work start with to get, 22 gauge. Yeah, it can be. You gotta, you know, have some strong forearms to, to cut that metal 
metal and then work with that. So for sure. Yeah. All right. Then talk to me that. So we're doing 24 here, yep. which is really what I've used. I've actually, that's not true. I've done one 22, but it was a ribbed roof, not a, um, not a uh, snap lock or in this case, a double lock. Yep. Talk to me about uh, paint finish on this 24 gauge roof that came, the metal came from you guys. Yeah. So we're doing predominantly PVDF finishes. Um, so when you talk about the best, that's really the, the top of the line painted finish you'll see on a metal roof. You'll see some siliconized polyesters that's kind of you know better and then the the lower end would be a polyester type system so so pdvf if i can interrupt you real yeah. quick a lot of builders kind of commonly refer to that like kleenex as a kynar finish yes but that's an actual brand name and that's not what's on here this is a sherwin williams pvdf which is the same technology but you have to be careful about that yep. brand name because that's not um that is like a kleenex brand exactly got it okay. exactly so so yeah, this is going to be a Sherwin Williams PVDF, and it is the the higher end thing. It, the higher end paints are going to last longer, have better fade characteristics than the other two systems, the SMPs and the Polys that I mentioned earlier. So, if this roof is going to go for 50 years, most of the time it's changed because people uh, are uh, you know wanting to change the color, that sort of thing, not because the roof is actually failing, right? Exactly. Exactly. So. The paint's gonna last much longer than than that 30, 40 years. That's what you're anticipating. Yep. But that's just what the warranty is for. And how does that paint actually go on? Is that rolled in your shop? You know, what how does this doesn't look like uh, it's a cheap paint job? No, <laughs> no. This so this is it's actually a roll coated process. So okay. it's at a high end industrial process and it's actually a baked on finish. So okay. um, it goes through some rollers and it, it, it rolls the paint on. Um, and then it goes through an oven and actually bakes the finish on. So uh, it's traditionally getting a primer coat baked on, then that PVDF coat baked on, and then it's spooled out into usable lengths for us, you know, 10, 12,000 pound coils for us. We bring it into Sheffield Metals location, and then we process that coil down to usable lengths and widths for our customers for standing seam applications, for uh, trim applications on flat roofs, or, or even trim applications on residential type roofing. So, gotcha. Yeah. Now, Adam, we talked earlier, or I talked when I was up on the roof, about some of the best practices about under, what's happening underneath your metals. Yeah. What are some best practices people can think of or keep in mind uh, when they're planning their metal roof? So, you know, it, a lot of it comes down to panel selection. Mm -hmm. So, you know, you showed that lower slope area on, area on your roof, that yep. 212. You know, we do not recommend a snap lock on, on low slope application. So the fact that you're, you're well, you're mechanically locked, mechanically seamed panels on across the board, but particularly on those low slope areas, yeah. you want to make sure that you've got the right panel, right selection, so on and so forth. Because the higher pitch has gravity working to shoot that water exactly. off. But when you lower that pitch down, you want to make sure that water is not getting into that seam. Right? Yeah, it's, it's going to be holding more water as it's shedding, you know, so you have hydrokinetic and hydrostatic systems. So you have a hydrostatic system. Yep. So meaning that, you know, on that lower slope area, that's going to hold more water. Let's say you get a driving rain, it's going to hold more water than your steeper slope area. So yeah. keep that in mind as you're, you know, thinking of what you want, you know, what you want, you might want a snap lock system, but it might not be the best system, even though, you know, depending on what your roof geometry and roof planes look like. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. Now, another thing that I was real special or specific on with my plumbers was I really wanted to reduce my penetrations. Yeah. Uh, I do have two skylights in the back, which penetrated and my roofer's making me a custom uh, flashing. And I also uh, like to stay away from deck mount. I like curb mount skylights. It mm -hmm. gives me a deeper flashing. Um, but one thing you'll notice, Adam, is you look at the front of the house, you don't see any roof penetrations yeah. in the front. I only have one roof penetration for a vent on the back side on the second story. And that's and that's a beautiful thing. That's another great design consideration. So if you are having the opportunity to design something kind of from the ground up, whatever you can do to, to minimize penetrations, that's going to be a big plus. Uh, you know, what you're talking about with the skylights doing curbs is, is much better than just, you know, trying to flash around. That's going to be a much longer, yeah. much longer term solution for shedding water, keeping water out, things like that. For so. sure. The last thing I want to uh, ask you about, Adam, is uh, I'm thinking about doing solar here. Talk to me about attachment on solar for metal versus some other roof systems. Yeah, so probably the best solution for solar is to go with a clamped on system. So, you know, the idea of a standing seam roof is you don't want to put penetrations in there. You yep. know, you, 
you're, you're trying to offset as many penetrations as you can. So we've got a great partner in S5. They're a uh, uh, roof attachment system. Uh, they've got... It's basically a clamp that it's goes clamp, onto the ridge, yeah. is that right? Exactly. So you're not screwing down, you're just kind of compressing onto the uh, onto that seam. Onto that seam. seam, yeah. So the seam is taking it, you're not creating a penetration, and it's an engineered system, so you know it's gonna last. So they say, hey, tighten it to this, put it this at this spacing, and you're good to go. And they've That's got awesome. they've got uh, snow retention systems, solar systems. You know, let's say you wanted to put a satellite dish on your house. Yeah. You know, you can have, you know, direct TV guy come out. You can attach that to the seam. You do not have to penetrate that seam to get that dish on that roof. That's awesome, man. Yeah. I'm excited about that. I'm facing kind of south and west on my house. So I'm thinking that I might add a solar array right here above my master bedroom. And with that black metal and that crimp, clamp that thing on. And I think the black and the black solar will also kind of blend in it won't oh, yeah. be quite as noticeable no that's cool adam really appreciate yeah, you, uh, you taking man. the time to come out guys if you're interested in learning more about sheffield the manufacturer of this metal roof they've got a great website set up just for build show it's sheffieldmetals.com backslash build show go check these guys out over there and when you're talking to your roofer consider sheffield they're the coil manufacturer they're shipping that to your roofer and then with that new tech machine they make it right here on the site or make it back there in the shop and you can see, man, it's making a bomber roof. I'm gonna go probably the end of my lifetime without having to mess with this roof. And I'm excited about that, Adam. Oh, yeah. Big thanks for sponsoring today's video, Adam. If you guys want more information, I'll have a link for these guys in the description. If you're not currently a subscriber, hit that subscribe button below. We've got new content here every Tuesday and every Friday. Follow me on Twitter or Instagram. Otherwise, I'll see you next time on The Build Show.